what's the point of a fire alarm? Well, to alert you to leave, obviously. But does it? We'd like to think that if a fire alarm did go off, we'd react straight away. Just get up and leave. But in reality, most of us don't. The first thoughts aren't, get out now. They're usually, is this real? Or is it a test? We'll look around, take cues from other people, and often wait before making a move. No one else seems worried. Chances are, we'll just carry on as normal. This isn't the fire alarm's fault. Of course, a fire alarm is only as useful as the person listening to it. But why? So what? Oh no, I can't be the first. What if I'm wrong? Wouldn't that be embarrassing? And a waste of time. I could be continuing shopping. Isn't it worth taking the risk to be wrong and embarrassing yourself just in case you're right and you save your life? Oh, well, apparently not. But it's not just embarrassment that stops us. People can stay put for a whole range of reasons. In 1979, upstairs from Manchester Woolworths was this restaurant. Well, not this restaurant, but a restaurant. A fire had started and toxic smoke filled the restaurant rapidly. Instead of rushing to the exits though, some customers thought that they can't leave. They haven't paid yet. That'd be rude. So instead, they stayed and waited, which unfortunately was where they were found. Another example, which is right behind me, was the Bradford City Stadium, a fire from 1985. During the match, a huge fire broke out in the stands, as you can see behind me. Huge seating area made of wood. And what did everyone think to do? Instead of standing on the pitch a very safe distance away, a lot of them decided to go back into the fire to escape through the fire exit. Why did they do that? You're not meant to stand on the pitch. You'd probably get arrested for that. I make this video as a reminder that in the case of a fire, don't worry about what other people think. Your life is all that matters. I'll leave you with an experiment to drive home the point. In the video, the fire is fake and everyone in it is an actor except for one person. Let's see how they react. Now, how long before she dashes out of the room? She's checking increasingly to see what the other people are thinking, but who can she appeal to? She turns to the norm of the group. She feels uncomfortable. She doesn't want to embarrass herself by taking the lead. Lauren stayed in the room for 20 minutes after spotting the smoke. In the end, we had to ask her to leave. Now they're going to do the experiment with no actors. Let's see if they act any different. She decides to investigate. She's immediately taking responsibility. Mary evacuates quickly. She even leaves her bag and coat. We tried the experiment 10 times, and the same thing happened over and over again. If the person was on their own, they left quickly. If they were in a group of three or more, they stayed. The average length of time they stayed, 13 minutes. Only one person in our experiment didn't go along with the crowd behavior. What's that coming out from under the table? That's a fire. She just wait till she comes back. She said just to wait here, yeah. didn't she? She's coming right down now. The power of the group proves irresistible. The reassurances of the rest of the group that somebody else is responsible need to be sufficient to pull him back into place. He sits back down again and waits. Now everybody's looking at the smoke. In some ways, that gives the group even more influence. Everybody can see the smoke and no one's panicking. It would be crazy for him to do it too. This is why pacifier protection is so important. Something that will work regardless of you being aware that it's working. It would be great if in the real world all of these factors weren't a thing and people just left as soon as they heard the alarm. But because they don't, at least we have pacifier protection as a last resort to help you keep safe in the case of a fire. If you learned something from this video, why don't you give us a like? And while you're there, follow the page.